Hi everyone, Badabing here, thanks for joining me. Today we'll be looking at the WE G17 Gen 4 gas blowback pistol, but this isn't any regular off-the-shelf G17. No, this one was sent to me by Psionic Upgrades for review. They are a company based in Italy that specialise in ROHOP and high-precision barrel upgrades for airsoft guns. From pistols to AEGs and sniper rifles, they have a selection of ready-to-go ROHOP upgrades that will greatly improve accuracy and range. They got in touch with me and offered to send out some sample goodies for me to try out. In all the years I've been into Airsoft, I've never tried out ROHOP upgrades, and I was very curious to see what kinds of improvements it's likely to give me, so thanks to Giovanni and his team for this opportunity. Before we get going, as usual, pour yourself a cup of coffee, put your feet up, and if you're sitting comfortably, then we will begin. Yes, the humble WEG17 Gen 4 gas blowback pistol. We find it in the typical WE box along with its magazine, manual, Gen 4 backstraps in medium and large. I'm also treated to some really cool Cyanic Upgrades merch. Mr Vincenti, you have such incredible attention to detail with this kit, thank you so much. Now, I remind you that I am free to speak my mind with this review, and despite being gifted this blaster, I stipulated prior to receiving it that I maintain creative control, and Psionix were more than happy with that. It's business as usual with the pistol itself. The WE Glock series have proven to be quite popular for players all around the world, and they give you a really good bang for your buck. The stock pistols can be had for around £100, so it's an excellent entry-level handgun for players with a small budget. For the price, the G17 is built very well indeed. The metal slide has some weight to it. Without the magazine installed, it's distinctively top-heavy. The finish of the slide isn't anything special, you've only got to run it a few times and you'll soon see it wear away on the edges. Its lockup to the slide is rigid, there's no play, it's a solid block of metal and polymer. Speaking of the polymer, it feels excellent in hand. WE always produce good plastics, and I find the Gen 4 frame is quite comfortable. As your hand and fingers wrap around the grip, the texturing is doing a great job at holding you in return. It's nice and grippy. Upon closer inspection, you can see some of the finer details are on the sloppy side, and I remind myself that originally, it is a cheap gun, so let's push on. There's not much to cover in terms of its features. Glock-style handguns need no introduction to their design and control functions. It is boringly simplistic. The Gen 4 large magazine release button drops the magazines freely, and likewise bites down onto the magazines firmly when it's inserted. The magazine itself is a chunky brick of metal weighing in at 276 grams empty. The slide glides over the internal hammer in much the same way every other gas glock does, with a slight hesitation as it runs over the hammer. It's not smooth by any means, but it's not gritty either. The outer barrel will bear the scars of the slide's actions within the first few strokes. They continue to produce an inner thread on their barrels, and with the addition of an adapter, it can take a suppressor. I personally wouldn't, as I've seen those break under the weight of a can. Removing the slide, you can instantly see its sporting aftermarket components. The brass hop-up chamber is produced by Maple Leaf, a brand well known for their upgrade parts. At first, they sent me an open-cut design hop-up interfaced barrel and throughout my initial round of testing it performed really well, until I shot out the R-Hop patch and snapped the hop-up adjuster. Giovanni took care of everything and replaced it with a new barrel with a closed cut that allows four points of contact, and further sealing the patch onto the barrel with Teflon tape. What an incredible job! Throughout my time shooting this pistol, I've noticed that the screws on the maple leaf chamber, they tend to creep out over time, so perhaps a tiny pinch of Loctite is necessary. The slide itself is a brick. Feeling the weight of it, you can already imagine its recoil is going to be enjoyable. Although, as always, the disadvantage is likely to be decreased gas efficiency and underwhelming cold weather performance. We'll see how we get on there. The section in which the slide engages the slide lock looks to be a thick section of metal. It's not an area that's treated with a steel insert for long-term durability, so we'll see how positively it connects going forward. The slide catch itself is steel. 
Internal fire controls look to be mostly alloy, with a few steel parts, including the trigger bar, hammer roller bearing, and the pins holding the components in place. You're likely to see failures as the years roll by, however it's all quite easy to access and replace given how few internal parts live within the hammer assembly. Rogue Studios made an excellent disassembly video on his Tokyo Marui G17, and I used his guide on my G17. Cheers mate. With the overview out of the way, let's see what it does on the Chrono. Using Propane and XL.2s, the FPS averages 303.8 across 25 shots, and that translates to 0.85 joules. Using Garda Power Up Gas, the FPS is bumped up to an average of 330.1. The highest reading was 346.9, and the lowest 308.4, losing 38 FPS overall. Its average output was 1 joule. The opening shot scored the highest with 1.11, and the energy of the final shot was 0.88 joules. These tests were performed at a comfortable 20 degree room temperature. Looking at the shot count per gas fill, 5 seconds of propane was able to fire off 70 shots. 10 seconds just missed the 100 shot milestone at 99. 15 seconds delivered 115, and as much as it would take in 20 seconds resulted in 121 shots, before the gas tank was totally empty. As usual, I'll mention this doesn't amount to much when it comes to real world applications. The effectiveness of the BBs will fall dramatically when you reach a certain threshold, depending on how efficient you are in your gameplay. When I'm out on the field, I always top up a few seconds of gas when I reload the BBs, so take this data as a very rough guide of this handgun's ability. What's it like to shoot? Out of the box, the humble WEG-17 is rather excellent. The weight of the slide bashing back and forth creates a strong impression in your hand. The effectiveness of the checkered grip allows you to hold it on target remarkably well, it's definitely not going anywhere. In comfortable conditions it empties its magazine without issue, and shoots the slide back to an abrupt stop with a positive snap. I can really see why it's chosen by many players for its responsiveness on top of its budget friendly price tag. Sadly, it suffers slide lock failure following multiple reloads and fresh gas charges. In no way is this an isolated incident, it's just one of those things with gas guns. This can happen even now as we transition through the warmer times of the year. The effects of the cooldown will take its toll, and halfway through it'll feel sluggish. In this condition, it doesn't have enough steam to cycle back far enough to engage the slide lock. If all you had was a mere 15 BBs charged instead of 25. This also negatively impacts its ability to hit things too, but more on that later. The weight of that slide doesn't help things either, it's this reason why I favour plastic slide handguns because they're higher reliability to run until it locks back. When the ambient temperature descends it can still run off the 25 rounds, but unless it's using something stronger than propane, its chances of running to the slide lock are slim. BBs are flying nicely out to roughly 40 meters, cutting dead straight, so that's, that's down to the upgrades on that one. Okay, run the action. Again, running the action is getting caught up there on, the, on its travel, uh, but the BB, surprisingly, they're flying out well around 40 metres, as I said.
They sent me a Springer. <laughs> That's incredible. The BBs are still flying way out there. When it is cold, you'll be lucky if the slide travels back far enough to gain momentum to complete its journey, as it gets caught up midway. Then it's basically a springer. Now, if I were using this at this point in-game, I'd be embarrassed, and would be slaughtered. But at home with no one to see me, it's not so bad and it's actually quite funny. The trigger action is delightfully positive. There's a light take-up right to the edge of the wall, and you can immediately feel it hit that wall. Finally squeezing past that stage is that crisp break. Super clean, super positive. The return journey is a short one and you hear its tactile reset more than you feel it. It is pretty cool shooting night vision with the SRO. It's um, bang, and that's just over 20 meters away. Hit, not bad, man sized target. Um, got a little bit of wind out there at the moment, so yeah. With the dot uh, on the SRO, I am having to aim just a little bit uh, to the left because we got the wind coming left to right, so I'm going to have to aim just a little bit left to get it on target. There we go. <laughs> this thing. Boom. Oh yeah, shooting with my vision. It's awesome. And they're not that noticeable on your face. With the R-Hop upgrades, it's time to see what it's like when delivering BBs. Giovanni recommended I use three twos up to fours, and the chamber is capable of lifting fours into orbit at the end of its adjustment, which it actually does very well. I think I got carried away with myself by launching four fives to begin with, so that's likely why I shot out the patch on the earlier barrel set. I decided to use my Trigicon SRO attached to my WeTech low profile RMR mount for the TM and WB clock series because my eyes just could not focus on the irons like they used to. So I bolted the G17 onto the Northeast Airsoft tripod, so I did my best to eliminate myself from messing up the shots. The target was 20 meters away and I used three different weight BBs with Garda Black Gas. Firstly, Jeff Bio 3s found their way onto the paper with several flyers around the box. The impressions left weren't as compressed as I'd like. Here is the best I could put together within the weight category from my series of magazines. Moving up to 3.6s now, and here's where we see them begin to tighten up. Out of 25 shots, 18 were able to make holes on the page. Fours are able to score the best. Well, that was obvious, wasn't it? It is shooting sniper ammunition within a short distance, and it's being held in a vice, so it's given every chance possible for success. But still, repeatedly hitting within a small space is something I've really only seen with rifles, never a pistol. With results like this, perfectly sets the stage for long-range capabilities.
Over the past year, I've been plinking away sending three different weight BBs out to 40, 50 and 60 metres. What's really impressed me is that not only can I successfully engage the target at ranges equal to an AEG, but I was connecting with repeatability. Beginning at 40 metres using point threes, this was a piece of cake. Point threes, 40 meters. While I could have dialed up the spin just a touch more, I still landed shot after shot, with only a few flyers swaying just off target. Note how straight the BBs travel in relation to where the dot is. They aren't straying too far away from the dot's longitudinal axis. Moving up to three sixes, and there were some times where I didn't connect as frequently as with threes. This is likely because I was using the same magazine after firing a series of tests with threes, and it was cooler than at the start. Regardless, you can see several shots land remarkably close to previous impacts. This particular clip I filmed last year, and I was dropping three sixes onto the target with higher frequency. Hit. 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 Shooting fours, and it was just too easy, and it shows. For a gas gun to maintain that level of proficiency is admirable, but to be fair, it's all about the upgrades and the right ammunition to get it there. Pushing out to 50 meters now, and threes just didn't want to touch the target. In all the days I spent last year and this year launching threes, I don't think I ever had one connect. As you can see, they just float off or touch down prematurely. To excel from this stage onwards, we'll leave 0.30 grain BBs behind and shoot three sixes. Three sixes, 50 meters. Hit. 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 As you can see, I was giving the target a good slap hit. with the slightly heavier rounds at this distance, hit. and with good hit ratio as well, so I'm very pleased with how it's shooting so far. Hit. Now, shooting fours, fours and making meters. hits at 50 meters look incredibly easy once again. Hit. 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 It's quite rare to have a day when my shots are not being disturbed by gusts of wind, but just look at that narrow trajectory of those BBs. Hit. The flight path cuts dead straight. 
The great thing about shooting this mannequin is it's easy to hear the BBs ping off the body. Even more so when you Hit. connect with the dome. So satisfying. Hit. 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 Miss. Hit. Magazine went out, I guess. We're getting cold, either one. Now, let's push the pistol to the final extreme and see if we can make hits at 60 meters. Shooting threes is like shooting a rainbow at 50 meters. Three sixes felt like that at 60, so I'm going straight for fours at this range. Hit. 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 Must have hit somewhere on the head, because that pinged. Hit. Center mass. Hit. Hit. The hit probability has gone down, that's for sure. However, I was super thrilled to connect a few times out of the four or five magazines I threw at it. This is the longest distance I have ever shot with an airsoft handgun, and to be able to hit the target more than once confirms it wasn't merely a freak occurrence. This is the very limit of what's possible with this handgun. The winds were kind, and that allowed the Sionic upgrades to truly shine. The WE G17 with Psionic Upgrades R-Hop Package. Let's break down the pros and the cons. Firstly, the construction of this handgun is very good. The entire frame in general, the feel of the polymer, and because there's always got to be three of these things, the slide lockup with the lower, it's exceptional. Functionality, as standard, is well defined. I really enjoy its execution from releasing the slide, trigger action, etc. Shooting action itself is enjoyable. Given comfortable circumstances, it's a superb experience. The range is incredible. The upgrades that Psyonic have put into this handgun really pushes the envelope of what this particular Hit. class of weapon can achieve. Accuracy is above average. I'd imagine it's dangerously close to what an upgraded non-blowback pistol would deliver. Reliability is high. I've spent almost a year shooting this G17 and it's still ticking along just fine. Not just this one either, there's a lot of people across the globe using these, and I'm always hearing positive feedback about them. There are various magazine options to choose from as well, green gas and CO2, but also lightweight polymer mags, extended 50 rounders, drums, and if that's your thing, HPA adapted drums. Parts availability is high, WE follows Tokyo Marui's designs closely, and as such, a high degree of parts are compatible. Upgradeability is even higher, there is so much aftermarket support for these things, it's great. WE series of G-style handguns is vast. They've made almost every variant available, and even putting out their own weird custom models, so you can surely find that particular version you like best. And finally, the greatest thing about these is that they are so affordable, and considering their potential, it's a lot of value for money. Now the bad news. The system doesn't cope well when the temperature falls. When it drops, the handgun begins to slow down. That feeling doesn't inspire you to draw your handgun in clear rooms. Even juicing it up with black gas didn't work for me and it couldn't encourage it to function to a point where it fired enthusiastically. The gas system struggles to provide you that level of confidence in this scenario. 
These pistols are unlicensed, therefore cannot possess the official trademarks. If you prefer markings, you'll have to find a shop that sells them with custom engravings, or you can get them done yourself, or you can buy a Numerex licensed brand. While these offer a good bang for your buck, that comes at a cost. Sensitive slide and barrel finish, and also cheap soft materials. The thickness of the slide is a touch wider than the real G17, and it can have issues fitting into some real holsters. As this is an upgraded system, it benefits from the best quality and heavier weight BBs, and those are expensive. The screws on the maple leaf hop-up chamber can become loose after a few magazines, and it would benefit from a dab of Loctite. The maple leaf hop-up adjuster for my earlier batch broke seeing as it's a thin piece of metal. As I mentioned earlier, I shot out the R-hop patch, but that's my fault for using some of the heaviest sniper BBs, and on the highest hop-up adjustment, so that's on me. And I think the final thing which I struggled with while making this video was simply the consistency. Despite being indoors in a controlled environment, the gas system didn't always deliver successful slide lock. Also, the upgrades within this G17 pushes the limits of what airsoft gas blowback handguns can achieve, and it's not capable of sustained consistency from a gas and mag system. There's only a finite amount of fuel, and environmental conditions play their part to the detriment of performance. Shooting multiple volleys of rounds would soon cool off the mags, and even Garda Black Gas struggled to regain order, surprisingly so even in the summer. I chose Garda Power Up Gas for the range tests so that the BBs would travel with enough speed to suit the R hop, and I'd say following two fills of gas, the pistol's hit probability fell drastically. So, is this particular upgrade kit worth it? Well, first of all, I mentioned a moment ago, if you are using cheap ammo, you're not going to benefit from the highest performance. It's like living on a diet of junk food and immediately try and compete in the Olympics. It's not going to work put crap in, and you'll get crap out. Although, if you really do commit and want the ability to take those long range shots and impress the rifleman beside you, or embarrass those ones against you, of course yes, do it. If all you have is this, your game would be anything but dull. Going pistol only when you know for a fact you're outgunned is challenging as hell, and that's when airsoft can be the most thrilling. You'll be super agile, and teammates would do a double take as they realise you're not carrying anything, apart from a pistol at your hip. I promise you it's going to feel freeing, in addition to being exhilarating. Outgunned, but not necessarily outmatched. Only thing is to understand it has its limitations from the fuel source it's using, and with standard mags the limited BB capacity. Not so much a problem with consistency if you're running... Okay, let me just say this. Ugh. HPA. If you are a general airsofter and only using this for close encounters, then no, I don't think this would be worth it to you. You'll be perfectly fine with the stock model in that case, and have a great time using it. As it is, this particular system would pair great with a carbine kit, and it would look pretty cool too. Following the evaluation period, I'm left impressed with the capability of this handgun, and I cannot wait to install the Psionic upgrade kit in my Tokyo Marui Scar. I look forward to seeing you there. Many thanks to Psionic Upgrades for sending me this handgun for review. The AHOP upgrade is an incredible product, and what's more, their service is outstanding, they really looked after me. If you are looking for a boost in accuracy and range, shoot them a message and see what they can do for you. Thanks to everyone that made it this far, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not like and subscribe? For regular updates, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. Until next time, look after yourselves. Cheers, guys.